Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So this week, the biggest vaccine news has to be the blood clot events related to the Johnson & Johnson vaccines. Now, in fact, the technology used in the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and the AstraZeneca vaccines were quite similar in terms of they are both adenoviral vector vaccine. So this week, I'm going to provide a digest of a few very recently published articles surrounding the blood clot events that are related to vaccines. And by the way, if you are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Han. My goal for this channel is to connect everyone with scientific fact. This includes my regular COVID-19 update and other science topic. If you want to stay connected, please consider subscribing to the channel. This channel needs your help to reach more people. And today we are going to look at what have we learned so far from these blood clot events and whether or how or what causes these side effects. First, a disclaimer, this video is my interpretations and summary of publicly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any advice on treatment, prevention, and diagnosis of any diseases, and I do not have affiliations with any commercial company I mentioned in videos. Let's look at some background information first. A little bit recap back in March, there were seven people in Germany aged between 20 to 50 years old developed a severe form of blood clotting disorder after the AstraZeneca vaccine, and six of the seven people were all young women had a rare form called the cerebrovenous sinus thrombosis, and three of the seven people have since died. And very recently in April, it's all over the news, about 6.8 million doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccine were given to the Americans, and there were six cerebrovenous sinus thrombosis cases reported after the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and they were all young women. And in this week's focus talk, we're going to look at the central question, what do we know so far about the link between adenoviral vector vaccine and blood clots? Because both AstraZeneca vaccine and the Johnson Johnson vaccines use very similar technology. Now, there were differences, but the central idea is the same. So we're going to answer this question with four different sub-questions. What were common in all of the severe blood clot cases looking at the AstraZeneca vaccines cases, and what is platelet factor for poly anion complexes, which I'll explain throughout this talk, and how does these blood clots compare to what we knew in the past, and what questions remain to be answered. And first, let's look at the common factors in all of the blood clot cases. During this past week, there were a few articles published in the New England Journal of Medicine looking at the blood clot cases related to the AstraZeneca vaccine. And one of the articles uh, called Thrombosis and Thrombocytopenia after this COVID-19 vaccine produced by AstraZeneca, they reported five cases. They looked at five cases of severe blood clots. Three of the five patients died in the report, and four of the five patients patients were women aged from 37 to 54. Three of the four women were on either hormonal contraceptive or hormone replacement therapy. All three women with supplemental estrogen died after the blood clot complications, and all five patients had a very high level of antibodies against platelet factor IV polyanion complexes and very low level of platelet count. Now, these two observations were also uh, consistent with the other two journal articles that were published within these couple of days. And since I mentioned the platelet factor 4, so what is it? What is platelet factor 4 polyanion complexes? Platelet factor 4 or PF4 is actually a very small positively charged molecules of uncertain biological function that are found in platelets that is responsible for forming blood clot. And PF4 can form complexes with negatively charged molecules. The idea is putting positive charged molecule together with negatively charged molecule, and they form something called PF4 polyanion complexes, here shown in the figure. 
So you're probably wondering how does these complexes and blood clots compare to what we already knew in the past? Like I said previously, PF4 can form complexes with negatively charged molecules, and one of the drugs that we use to treat blood clots called heparin can also form a complex with PF4, and leading to a very rare but serious drug-induced side effect called heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. In heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, PF4 forms a complex with heparin, and the body generates an antibody to bind to PF4 heparin complex. And the tail of this antibody, or so-called FC region, can bind to receptors on the platelet, leading to platelet activations and formations of blood clots, also known as thrombosis. And because the formation of blood clots, it will deplete all the platelet and use it up, and leading to a condition called thrombocytopenia. The author of the article find out all five patients had a very high level of antibodies to platelet factor IV polyanion complexes, and they also have a very low level of platelet count. And they believed a blood clot event happened in the five patients were similar to the event we just talked about, the heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. And they give it a new name called vaccine-induced immune thrombosis from bocytopenia, or abbreviated as VITT. And what happened with VITT is actually quite similar to heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. You have PF4 forming the complexes with polyanion, and the body generates IgG antibody that can bind to this complex, and the tail or the FC region bind to platelet, and leading to platelet activation, uh, forming blood clots or thrombosis, and then also depleting the uh, platelet in the process leading to thrombocytopenia. Now we know some of the factors that lead to thrombocytopenia of and thrombosis from vaccine. So what questions remain to be answered? The biggest question is why? Why does the vaccine cause the immune system to generate antibodies against PF4 complexes? Are these antibodies a result of vaccine or other factors? Could supplemental estrogen from hormonal contraceptive and hormone replacement therapy play a role? We know that hormonal contraceptive and HRT are known to increase risk for blood clots. Are there something from the adenoviral vector form complexes with the PF4? Is it adenovirus DNA or their protein? There are all these questions we don't have an answer for now, and more research are needed to draw conclusive answers to bring a full picture to the play. And here are the take-home message of this week. More women are associated with recent blood clots after both AstraZeneca and Johnson Johnson vaccines. Women on supplemental estrogen, either for contraceptive or for hormone replacement, appears to have worse outcome when blood clots happen, and very high level of antibodies against PF4 complexes are observed in both female and male patients, and this event is similar to heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, which also have these antibodies formed against a PF4 complex leading to abnormal blood clot and low platelet count. So the new term the author came up for this condition is vaccine-induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia, and definitely more research is needed to answer the cause of its development. And to learn more, here are the articles that were published in the New England Journal of Medicine. All three of those talked about very similar content, looking at the antibody levels against the PF4 complex. And for those of you that are in the medical field, I highly suggest you to read about those 
uh, articles to learn more. And the last one is the explanations on heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. So far, it is the best explanation that are similar to what we believe is happening with the blood clots after vaccination. So I hope this video was able to give a partial answer to the blood clot questions surrounding those COVID vaccines, and I'll keep an eye on the latest development as it goes. If you have questions or the general questions about COVID or COVID vaccine, please feel free to leave comments in the, in the comment section down below, and I'll try to get to it one by one. And that is all for this week's COVID fo focus talk, and I'll talk to you again next Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another uh, update on all these COVID-related topics. And meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy. Bye.